Well, HTML5 definitely refocuses the agenda of uh, companies and publishers, uh, and it takes away their, the focus from uh, mobile apps, something now native mobile apps, to mobile web. The reason for that being is that HTML5 reduces the cost of development because it's a uh, one technology catering for all OSs, all platforms, whether it's Android, iOS, Blackberry, so on and so forth. It also gives sites application-like capabilities so that you can have web apps that actually look like uh, apps and you can uh, choose in a hybrid web app, native app kind of like strategy where you can di distribute and deliver through the app stores or you can distribute and deliver the web app uh, on your own. So it's definitely very important and since publishers and companies are investing and in are uh, in their communication channel with the consumers, it's ve definitely very important to embrace HTML5. Definitely HTML5 gives very advanced features to sites. That's unquestionable. But there are some drawbacks. HTML5 sites, rich media sites, uh, tend to be very bulky, very uh, slow to download, especially when 3G coverage is not that great. Um, so you, one should cater for, and also the, the, the HTML5 space right now is rather fragmented. HTML5 doesn't really work the same way in each and every one of the platforms. But there are authoring tools that take care of that, such as Veltis 5ML, and also there are tools such as uh, uh, device repository solutions, such as Device Atlas, that do detect which device one is serving so that assets can be, audio and video assets can be optimized and the experience can be much, much uh, uh, better and optimized. Well, definitely uh, feature phone owners cannot experience HTML5 experience. So uh, uh, this is becoming a little bit of less important because uh, feature phone users are decreasing in number and the relation to content monetization is much weaker than uh, smartphone uh, owners. However, there are some things that could really uh, make uh, the user experience of feature phone owners much better, and that includes the rewriting of some uh, sites and development of some sites uh, with ways that uh, uh, exploit XHTML uh, features. It also involves optimizing audio and video assets for each different device, and again there, cornerstone for uh, doing that are uh, device repository solutions such as Device Atlas. So knowing which device you're serving, one is serving, uh, makes the user experience much better even for a f uh, feature phone owner. We are actually facing, uh, let's say, a double revolution. On one hand, we have HTML5 technology that unifies uh, all uh, web serving uh, devices. But on the other hand, we also have the revolution of different uh, web surfing devices such as tablets, smartphones, different size tablets, connected TV, so on and so forth. So uh, in order for one to exploit the unique characteristics of uh, each uh, device, one has to cater for their needs and uh, really know again which device we're serving. All of uh, the top players have embraced HTML5 technology. Uh, to name some, LinkedIn, Twitter, Amazon with its Kindle application, and of course Financial Times, which is a great example where a web app uh, using HTML5 technology was marketed through the native OS app. And it actually had the same functionality and the same native app uh, look and feel. Now another great example is Refuel America of Draft FCB, where which was uh, uh, created and built using Veltis 5 ML. It contains video and uh, image interactive galleries. It contains native uh, app uh, look and feel, page transitions, so on and so forth. And it's a great example of how uh, HTML5 sites will be working very, very soon. A mobile site in five years' time will be multiple sites. I mean, it will have different faces. Uh, so it's going to be different when you browse it through your smartphone while you stroll down the street, different when you drive and you uh, access it through your navigation screen of your car, very different when you walk in the restaurant and the same mobile side of that restaurant uh, will change into the menu. So it's going to be very location and context relevant. It's going to have application-like characteristics. I also think that because of the capabilities given by HTML5, they are going to be, uh, mobile sites by then are going to be much more vocal and touchy feel. By that I mean they're going to be talking back to you. They're going to have music. 
internet is a little bit mute right now. And also, I do expect a lot of haptic and tactile feedback characteristics from those sites.